<laughs> what's up everybody what's up MGTOW so this is going to be one of those videos that's not very popular kind of like most of my videos but it's going to be looking at men in relation to society as opposed to you know looking at what's wrong with women we could take a look at what's wrong with men in society too sometimes and maybe that could help sometimes too maybe everything isn't taking women's rights away maybe some of the things in society are actually caused by the way that men interact with each other it's just a question it might be it might not be so anyway let's get into it basically the video is going to be looking at society in relation to musical trends and how that kind of reflects you know society and art reflect each other so we can kind of look at some trends in music throughout history or at least modern history and look at those in relation to society now one of the first things that you hear especially in MGTOW is that you know the left wing and conspiracy circles they'll say that the left wing is what's causing the atomization and individualization in society but the right also has a role to play in the atomization of society as well and of course in individualism because the right is the more individualist side of things and i think that hyper competitiveness amongst right-wing people does cause divisions between men because when men become hyper competitive to where it's like a hobbesian every man for himself type of society where there's no loyalties there's no it's just dog eat dog and you know that's it and there's no you can't trust anybody you can't be loyal to anybody you can't have any real friends because anybody's trying to take your spot so it causes atomization because it's you're not just an individual working within a collective now you're just an individual that's it and i think uh david ike puts it best when he describes the society as a hunger game society now a lot of people say that you know 1984 brave new world those type of books are game plans or I guess you could say guidebooks to show you how to run totalitarian societies but really all societies are totalitarian in the end because in the end if you're not a part of the society then you get canceled out of that society if you don't fit into the society so all societies are cancel cultures culture is designed to cancel people that's the whole point of culture it's like you're either in the culture or you're not in the culture it's a in-group out group type of thing but anyway I digress the way I look at those type of books is that like 1984 is basically for the boomers you know they're scared of Russians and Germans and the bomb and everything and everything was just you know they're scared and they're just worried that everything was gonna blow up at any second and then Gen X was more on the Brave New World thing with the free love and drugs and all that type of stuff and TV becoming very big during that time period. And then the Millennials is the Hunger Games Society, but now we all live in the Hunger Games Society. It's just that it's their society. But of course, the Hunger Games is typified by that type of Hobbesian, every man for himself, all against all. There's no social contract. There's no connections between people it's just there's just one spot there's the one spot and if you don't get the one spot then you're dead and that's how our society is developing on the left and on the right so it's not just a left-wing thing that's causing the atomization now on the right this type of attitude is kind of typified by this you know second place is just first loser type of attitude where it's a winner take all you're either you're either a ceo of a corporation or you're a homeless guy living on the street there's no in between there's no middle class there's no nothing it's just either you're a winner or you're a loser and now if we juxtapose this with an older type of social attitude towards you know achievement 
we can see that there was a much more, I guess you could say, forgiving level of achievement. And we can look at a sports analogy to kind of see this, where, you know, I think that because growing up in the 80s and stuff, I used to watch a lot of sports and stuff with my family. So, you know, I could see the attitudes were different. It was kind of like there was a respect for being on the team. Even if you were on the bench, all the guys watching the game knew that that guy on the bench would dunk on them or score a touchdown on them or tackle them so hard that they would never be able to get back up again. Even though he was on the bench, he was, they, everybody recognized that he was still on the team and he was better than everybody else in the world besides the five guys that were on the, on the field. But now you've got like armchair quarterbacks telling you that, I don't know any professional sports players that are right now, but like, you know, sitting there saying like, Mike Tyson's whack because he got knocked out. It's like, oh yeah, Mike Tyson's garbage. He's trash. Look at him. He got knocked out. It's like, dude, you you would pass out. You would get knocked out when you put the shorts on to go and fight Mike Tyson. You wouldn't even get in the ring. You put the shorts on and then you just wake up like, oh, it happened. But but you're gonna call Mike Tyson trash. And see, that's the type of attitude that people have these days, which I think is leading to this type of atomization where it's like nobody wants to be second fiddle to anybody nobody wants to be in a group with anybody because then it just makes it so that you're not the best person around and then from that you know people are always competing against each other there's no reason for you to be friends with somebody because at the end of the day you're trying to take their spot because it's the hunger games So I guess some of those points could kind of be summed up in a word which the Christians use a lot, which is dignity, which it's not so much that, you know, we have to elevate every single person to the heights of society. You know, obviously there's a hierarchy and some people contribute more or other things to society where they deserve to get more recognition, more remuneration, whatever the case may be than others. But at the same time, I think that if people are, are on their square, if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, if they're going to work, they're, they're, they're taking care of their family, feeding their family, whatever they got to do, you know, what they're doing, whatever they got to do. And they're not slacking off, but their highest achievement maybe is, you know, flipping burgers or scrubbing floors or something like that, but they're doing what they got to do. And those floors are clean. Those burgers are flipped every time. I think that those people deserve dignity. In society they don't deserve to be crapped on and told that they're losers and you know that they, they should just get a life if they're if they're working I mean great if you're just sitting around doing nothing then yeah you shouldn't be getting any recognition you shouldn't be getting any rewards for that but what I'm saying is just a basic dignity that it's like people you shouldn't have to live in a society where people are calling you a loser when you're working as hard as possible and contributing to society as much as you can and again, I'm not saying that you should be a billionaire if you're a janitor, but you also shouldn't be getting crapped on by people when you're doing your job. That's what I'm saying. And I think that a lot of times now, especially people on the right, will, will crap on that guy. They will crap on the janitor. They will crap on the burger flipper, even though he's doing his job. And, that's, and I think that's where you're kind of losing people, especially on the right, where it's like, you just have to, be, it's, it's not that you have to be a player. It's not that you have to be in the game. It's that you have to be a winner. Otherwise, we don't even want to talk to you. And part of that, part of it is kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy because if you're not already a winner and then you got to get in the winner's circle to get more wins. So it's just one of those things. But if we look at the music point of it, we can see that Similarly, on the right, you know, people that are more into the traditional Western values and things like that, we can see that a lot of people have kind of lamented the death of classical rock, you know, orchestra music, bands type of things. And a lot of this has to do with that same social attitude of either you're a winner or you're a loser. And in a band, the lead singer, the lead guitarist is the winner 
and everybody else's first loser, you know? The bass player's first loser, the drummer's second loser, you know? And we could see this attitude, like, for instance, a very popular philosopher, Stefan Molyneux, always uses the drummer as an example when he's talking to women about hypergamy. He said, no, no, don't marry the drummer. You don't want to marry the drummer. And that, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, that's pretty much exactly what he says. He's saying, oh, no, not the drummer. Stay away from the drummer. So if you're telling everybody in society that, you know, being the drummer is a bad thing, that if you're the drummer, that you suck, you're a loser, get a life, learn how to play guitar, learn how to sing, right? You're not going to have any bands, period. If, if, no, if, if being the drummer is like not a position that anyone wants to occupy because they don't want to get crapped on by everybody else, and you know, Stefan Molyneux telling people not to date you because you're not the lead singer of the band, then why would you be in a band? And even worse, you know, you can look at the social structures from previous times where you had orchestras, where you had everyone playing and there was a small audience and there was, well, not everyone, but, you know, there could be hundreds of instruments playing all in unison all at one time. And then as we move forward in time, you know, the bands got smaller, you know, it was like six piece bands and five piece bands, four piece. And now it's like mostly three pieces considered a rock band now where that never would have been considered a band like, you know, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, you would have had to have a lot more instruments in it. So you can see it just slowly over time, the band shrink as society's attitudes towards inclusion in society and dignity and how much of a winner do you have to be to be recognized as an up and up, the bands get smaller and smaller and smaller because people don't want to work with each other because nobody wants to be the drummer because being the drummer means you get crapped on by society. Even though you're in the band, you're playing, you're better than everybody else that, that tried out for the band, but you're not good enough for, for everybody else though. It's not good enough. You have to be number one. If you're not number one, we don't want to talk to you. So my kind of last point here is if you look now at you know solo artists which is most of the billboard charts i don't really go by the billboard charts because it's basically paid for who's on there so it's it's kind of rigged but i mean you can look at the trends and you can look throughout history you know going back it it sways like every decade or so between solo artists and bands but then after 2000 it's just solo artists it's all solo artists it doesn't sway back to like band more bands being on the top and more solo artists being in the top. It's just solo artists and this new thing, which is the feature. Now, if you're not into a lot of pop music, you might not know what the feature is, but the feature is kind of comparable to a duet in classical music terms, which would have two separate artists that aren't in a band together, but they're both singing on the same song or rapping on the same song, whatever. And one of the distinct things about a feature as opposed to a duet is there's kind of like a power dynamic within a feature as opposed to a duet. Like traditionally a duet is, you know, one person sings one verse, then both people sing on the chorus and the refrain, and then another person sings on the second verse, and then they could either have a bridge where both people are, depending on the song, you know, sometimes the one person's talking like maybe it's cold outside or you know, other songs like that. But it was typified by a kind of like an even amount of each person getting solo time and then them going together. Well, a feature is not like that. A feature is typified by one artist typically either dominating the track or a less known artist like inviting a more well-known artist onto the track. And then, I mean within hip-hop it's kind of I mean I can't really get into all of it but basically there's some different defining features of like a hierarchy within the track like say for instance you know a bigger name artist if if you were a lower name artist hiring a bigger name artist you'd want to have him go last on the track so that way that people would listen to your verse first and then listen to the better known artist second 
but if the better known artist is inviting you onto the track to like give you some recognition you might go second and people might not listen to your verse so there's always kind of like a, a hierarchy there of who's more famous and who gets more time and what position their verse is on the track it it's complicated but if you kind of understand how how the music industry works you can kind of see that there's a hierarchy within it and then sometimes you know a feature doesn't have equal time in fact a lot of the time a feature doesn't have equal time it will be you know two verses by the main artist and one verse by the feature artist like that's a typical feature and lately i've been seeing that features have been getting even less and less like featuring the artist that they're featuring now two good examples of this that i've just seen recently is the new buster rhymes video where in the old he did a song with mop called annie up and i, I can't remember when it came out i think it was like 2000 or 90 something like late 90s and it was it was a song with Busta Rhymes featuring M.O.P. And in the Andy Up song, each person has an equal length verse on the song. And the chorus, I think, I can't remember. The chorus has everybody on it, I think. Don't quote me on that, though. Now, in the new Busta Rhymes song, where it's featuring M.O.P., even though it's supposed to be featuring M.O.P., the only thing that M.O.P. does on the song is actually they take a sample from the original M.O.P. Busta Rhymes song and then play that in between the verses that Busta Rhymes does. So you could see that, you know, as Busta Rhymes is much more famous than M.O.P., at the time he, at the time when M.O.P. came out with the original song, they were much more popular. But now they're not as popular, and you can see how diminished their amount of actual, like, input into the song is compared to the earlier one and then another good example the song that just came out today which was a miley cyrus song with stevie nicks on it and it's a stevie nicks song it's that that white wing dove song or whatever and stevie nicks is singing backup for miley cyrus it's like okay stevie nicks feature miley cyrus featuring stevie nicks but Stevie Nicks doesn't have a verse on it. She's just singing backup for Miley Cyrus. So you can see like a feature, there's something about it not being equal as opposed to a duet where the duet is all about it being equal. So I'm going to link to those songs that I was just talking about down below and you can check them out yourself if you want and kind of see the difference between the verse styles and the amount of time each artist gets. But I guess just to sum it all up, I think you can kind of see where I'm going with this. You know, I'm just kind of going off the top of my head. But basically, you know, if you set up a society in which, you know, the, the people that are doing their job, even if they're not the highest ranking members in society, if you just say, well, hey, if you're not the highest ranking member in society, you're crap. You don't deserve to live. We should shoot you in the face. You're a loser. You're this, you're that. And they're doing their job and they're trying, you know, and they're trying to do the best of their ability and they're taking care of what they got to take care of. I just, you know, I think that there should be some recognition of that, you know, bring it back to the sports analogy. You know, we should recognize that people, some people are doing better than you are, but they're just not doing better than every like the top, top, top person. And do we really want to live in society where it's like, if you're just not the top, top, top person, you're irrelevant. You're nothing. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But then don't complain to me when there's no bands and there's no rock music. So that's all I got to say about that. Good day and go MGTOW.